Shoemaker. Shoemaker Guitar Works here. Working on this uh, Paul Reed Smith and putting in the Evertune Bridge. And you, it came with uh, all these templates. And uh, so there's a couple processes you have to do before you uh, go ahead and stick the templates down and to stick the templates down I'm just going to use masking tape because I've already put masking tape on top of the guitar here so that should work pretty well for me and I can just peel it back off I do have some double stick uh, heavy sticky double stick tape if I need it but uh, uh, so the first thing I did was took my straight edge here and marked the neck lines the shape of the neck going down and then uh, the second thing I did, sorry, it's allergy season, so my allergies are driving me crazy. I marked exact center of the guitar. So I found exact center, and I don't know if you can see my exact center line here on the, uh, at the 12th, but uh, anyway, so I found my exact center. And then uh, I marked my scale length which on this guitar it's a Paul Reed Smith so it's 25 inch scale so it is from the tip of the nut to right exactly here it's 25 inches and so I got that marked now uh, I'm going to and I just use regular blue low tack masking tape uh, painters tape whatever you want to call it and put it on here and got everything marked uh, just using a pen uh, use a pen so you don't have to press hard pencil you sometimes can't see but anyway uh, so you take your F and T 1x put it on here line up your center lines your exact center line, your bridge line, your center line, and that should put these lines exactly in the middle of that hole, which it does, once you get it positioned correctly. So, do that. Sure, it stays put. And they're clear plexiglass, so it's nice so you can see through and see your center lines that are marked. So I'll put tape here, Stumac tape, not sponsored by them, but not sponsored by Evertune either, but I would love to be, so if either one of you want to uh, sponsor me, that'd be great. So I've got everything lined up, and that, now I will take this one here, which is f and Top 1, and... It came with these ferrules here. Put them down in. And these ferrules act as guides for the drill bit that Evertune actually provided, which is awesome because not everybody provides the tools that you need. So you set push the ferrules up in I guess would be the easiest way to do it. Set that on top of there and make sure all your lines are lined up. Again I'm going to put some tape on there. 
wasn't a very good rip, was it? Just to hold it in place. drill these holes completely through the guitar. I know that's kind of hardening for people to do, but uh, that's part of what you have to do here. Um, so Evertune even provided the proper drill bit, which is a number seven drill. Got my trusty Dewalt. Now comes the scary part of drilling through it. I actually need my bench pucks to put this on, and I don't have them, so I'll be right back. I'm going to go grab them. All right, so I'm back with my uh, bench dog tools, uh, bench cookies. I call them bench pucks because they're basically a hockey puck. And so we'll raise that up. Actually, I think I'll put one on either side. There, now it sits nice and level. Nice and stable, isn't going to move. Double check to make sure all your lines are lined up. Going right down through the center. Got my space underneath. one through then what I like to do is once you get that first hole drilled if you got a spare number seven drill bit put it through there and then you know you're not gonna move be sure and pull it up several times to clear out the chip I should be doing this back in the shop, and when it comes to, to routing it, I will. I'll put it, uh, I'll have it back in the shop. Haven't decided if I'm going to use my pin router with just the bearing bit coming from the top and raise it up and down with the table, or if I'm going to do it uh, with a hand router. Most of you guys out there would use a hand router to do it, so we'll see how it goes. So we're through. And just to show that everything's lined up, you take your extra number seven drill bit, and there you go. They're perfectly lined up. So now. We can untape and remove our templates here. Got my kids at the shop with me today. They're off doing their homework. And I think Grayson wants to be on camera, so say hello. Hi. Sorry about the technical difficulty. They went to the eye doctor today and. You know, they're, they're, uh, Thursday is my wife's day to homeschool them, and she had to do something for her mom, so they came to the shop with me. But hey, they brought me lunch too, so you can't beat that. What kind of guitar is this? 
This is a Paul Reed Smith PRS. It looks like a strap, like I was wondering. Uh, it's like, sort of. Like the bottom. Kinda, kinda. I was wondering because of the headstock. So, we got our hole, holes drilled. Take that template off. And then Evertune says that you want to chamfer the holes. So this is a countersink or a chamfer. And that will protect that edge from any kind of chip out that you get. This thing's super sharp. And it don't take much. It's cutting through the tape and the corner of the wood. Grayson is a striving luthier himself. He is. He is. How many guitars have you built now, Gray? Two. You built an SG out of parts that I had here. That and the SG and should have been thrown away. Yeah, the SG was just garbage that should have probably been thrown away, but. He painted it and uh, designed it all himself and did a pretty good job of it. I'm very proud of him. And then uh, we built a kit guitar together as a project for school. Which and, I could not uh, paint that. I did a really cool uh, big metallic green paint job to it for him. So that was pretty awesome. But uh, anyway, so we got our holes chamfered. And I'll bring you back here in a little bit for the next steps. Uh, we're going to have to start from behind now and uh, use those holes that we just drilled and drill some more. So we'll bring you back here in a little bit. Thanks, guys.